Abba, Father, you alone deserves all the adoration, King of kings. I am that I am. We exalt you this day. Lion of the tribe of Judah, take all the glory, take all the honor. Be thou exalted, Lord, be thou magnified. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Tuli mukubela boko, omulangiro mulunji. Tuli mukubela boko, muagadwa. Tuli mukubela boko, kwa umu sabako ye. Tuli mukubela boko. Mwagadwa tulimukubera woko tulimukubera woko omulangiro mulunji tulimukubera woko mwagadwa tulimukubera woko tulimukubera woko ngwe awumuza bakoye Tulimukubela woko mwagara Tulimukubela woko Tulimukubela woko Yekwe Omulangiro mulunji Tulimukubela woko mwagara Tulimukubela woko Tulimukubela woko Yekwe Mawumuza bako
and all the time. And that's his nature. Let's give him a mighty hand clap. Hallelujah. We are going to praise the Lord this afternoon. Amen. Tell your neighbor wherever you are, in your sitting room, at your workplace, wherever you are, tell them we are going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. HT one netendo we mutine mukama. HT one netendo we mutine mukama. HT one netendo we mutine mukamo yo. HT one netendo we mutine mukama. HT one netendo we mutine kabaka. HT one netendo we mutine mukama. Oya luke sasa na tuleta HT one tu chimuti se. HT one
We worship you, Lord. We exalt you. Angels bow before your throne. Miracles happen in your name. What a mighty God you are. And angels bow before your throne. Miracles happen in your name. What a mighty God you are. Angels bow before your throne. Miracles happen in your name. What a mighty God you are. Angels bow before your throne. Angels bow before Miracles your throne. Happen. Miracles happen. Miracles happen in your name. What a mighty name. God. What a mighty God you are. Angels bow before your throne. Angels bow before Miracles your throne. Miracles happen. Miracles happen in your What a mighty name. God. What a mighty God you Angels bow before you throne. Angels bow before you throne. Miracles happen. Miracles happen in What your a name. mighty God. What a mighty God you are. Angels bow before you throne. Angels bow before you throne. Miracles happen. Miracles happen in What your a name. mighty God. What a mighty God you are. Oh, angels bow. Angels bow before you. Miracles happen. Miracles happen in your name. What a mighty God. What a mighty God you are. We lift you up. We lift you up. Lord, we lift you up. We lift you up. 
for miracles your glory. happen. Miracles happen in what a mighty name. God. What a mighty God you are. Angels bow before you throw. Angels bow before miracles your glory. Miracles happen. Miracles happen in what your a name. mighty God. What a mighty God you are. We need you are. Praise the Lord. We want to thank the Lord that this is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in him. Can we please humble ourselves and we pray? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, almighty God, everlasting King. We bless your name. Daddy, be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. For all that you do and what you shall continue to do, Father, we say thank you. For your glory and power, your goodness and mercy, Father, we say thank you. Be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as we go into your word, give us revelation and understanding. We bind and cast out anything contrary that wants to rise up against us during this session. Spirit of the living God, come and have your way. That we shall not only be hearers of the word, we'll be doers of the word, and the name of the Lord will be glorified. Father, take all the glory, take all the honor, take all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we prayed. Praise the Lord. We want to thank the Lord for this day. Our Lord has been good, has been gracious. 
Um, we started looking at our kingdom living principles, and we are still looking at Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Uh, we are going back to revisit what are the statements that our Lord Jesus Christ made that we need to take note of, understand, and then put to practice into our lives. Uh, because the king kingdom living principles is uh, teaching us the lifestyle that a believer or a child of God is supposed to live. Uh, so today we shall look at, um, it's still part of the spirit of the law, we are going to look at um, the topic of love your enemies. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. This is what Jesus spoke about in Matthew chapter 5, and it's from verse 43 to verse 47. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 47, we look at love your enemies. So can we please turn our Bibles uh, to Matthew chapter 5, and we are going to read from verse 43 to 47. We read, I'm um, reading it from the New King James Version. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your enemy and hate, uh, sorry, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the sons of your father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not the, even the tax collectors do so? So there was something that was happening at that time. Those who believed in Jesus Christ and followed him, they were being attacked, they were being persecuted at that time. They were not speaking good things about them. So Jesus is now telling them that you have to be different. You cannot act like them. You cannot behave like them. And uh, this is why he brought out some of these um, statements telling them that even though they persecute you, even though they speak um, bad about you, even though they despise you, he's saying that don't act the way they act. Be different. Uh, this is something common that um, we face uh, mostly in the body of Christ, you know. There are those who can rise up and just attack you from nowhere, say all sorts of things, and you wonder where is this person picking it from? You've not done anything to them. You don't even know them. Even many times you might not even want to know about them. But they are the ones who rise up against you. They get up, they speak all sorts of nasty words, and they spread it like it is something they have seen practically you doing. So those are the categories that uh, you know our Lord is talking about. Um, of course, when an average person looks at the word enemy, they are looking at uh, witchcraft. They are looking at um, <laughs> familiar spirit. Uh, those who are using familiar spirits, those who are attacking with witchcraft. Uh, the, the, concept here, the concept here is more of those that would not attack. You see how it is going so much in social media. Somebody just rises up against a man of God, a woman of God, puts something on them and begins to spread it like fire. You know, speak all sorts of things. So when the person rises up and is very aggressive, they now begin to say, it's the devil's work, it's the devil's work, it's the devil's work. So let us look into these uh, other passages that are references to what our Lord is talking about. Uh, that let's go to the Old Testament and look at Deuteronomy chapter 7. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, and we are going to read verse 1 and 2. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 7, 1 and 2. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, and the Hittites and the Gashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, and thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them, thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Then when you continue, it says, Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not 
uh, give unto his son and the other way round. So these are people that, uh, these Jebusites and uh, those different tribes that were mentioned there, uh, they, they came in, they came in, in uh, with their different idols and they possess the promised land where the children of Israel were supposed to settle in. And now God is giving uh, Joshua instructions to go and conquer and take over. And that's why after they get into, they get into the promised land, there were some other giants they had to pull down for them to fully possess. And a time came when it was, there was a delay. Joshua did not fully, fully conquer all the land that he was supposed to conquer. And this is where now God comes and tells him, Joshua, thou art striking, you know? Thou art old and striking in edge. So he's, he became faint. He could no longer do the job as he would do when he was energetic. So that also affected the children of Israel because they are particular places that God told Joshua to possess for Israel. And, and you see some of these things that we see the battles going on uh, currently and all over the battles over land and things like that. Uh, just when if one doesn't fulfill their task and finish what they're supposed to do, they leave problems for the next generations that come after. They leave issues and unresolved. These are what we call the unresolved issues uh, that now keep following after, you know, the next generations. So... When you look at that Deuteronomy chapter 7, 1 and 2 that we've read, uh, these are, this is one of the cardinal laws that we read in the Old Testament. Uh, you know, uh, fight your enemies, confront your enemies. Now Jesus has now come, and Jesus brings us to a higher law from the one of love your neighbor and hate your enemy. He, comes us, he brings us now to a higher law. And you know the topic we're looking at is the spirit of the law, the spirit of the law. He now brings us to a higher law which says love your enemies, bless them and do good to them. Love your enemies, bless them and do good to them. So when you look at the cross-reference cross of a similar uh, scripture that is there, you find it in Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25, uh, verse 21 and 22. Proverbs 25 Verse 21 and 22, um, Proverbs 25 tells us that if thy enemy be hungry, give him bread, uh, bread to eat. And if he's thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap the coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward you. So they are trying to avoid revenge. They are trying to teach us, don't hit back, don't revenge. Uh, because you did this to me, I also have to hit back. I have to attack back. He says, you operate in a different way. Operate in a different way. Uh, when you also look at Romans chapter 12, Romans 12, uh, verse 20 and 21, it also speaks the same things as uh, what a Proverbs has said. It brings out the same thing. But the verse 21 of, of Romans says that um, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So it's still talking about don't revenge, don't hit back, don't give fire for fire, you know. Uh, there are some people in the body of Christ, until, until they hit back a person is when they will rest. Uh, somebody has accused you falsely, spoken all sorts of lies against you. You now rise up and say, I'm also going to get a story about them and hit them back. It's for fire for fire. The end result of that will come up to something else. So Jesus is saying, don't think the way they think. Don't act the way they act. You act oppositely. When they say that you are, they accuse you of all sorts of things that you have done, you in your heart, you know you have not done it. Why should you be bothered? Of course, there are some things that can be so painful. There are some things that can be hurting. They tarnish. It's a matter of time. I always tell people, if God... And the God we keep preaching and say he's on the throne and he's alive. He does not sleep, no slumber. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. You cannot shatter one's integrity. You cannot destroy one's personality. You cannot destroy one and you think you get away with it. You, you, it, it might take a year, two years. You're joying and floating in it and you feel that, yeah, I said it, nothing happened. But... When God now begins to do his work, uh -huh, I always tell people even a fly will not come to sympathize with such a person. So a lot of things are going on. A lot of things are happening. Uh, people talk too much, you know. People talk too much. People are more attracted to negativity than positivity. 
if you want to pull a crowd, like you see, I told us this some other time, there was a powerful man of God, very powerful man of God. Uh, some other preacher just rose up against him. And the preacher was told that if you want to pull uh, a huge good number of followers online, just attack a popular man of God and put the theme, make the topic be catchy. He say you get as many followers as you can. So the guy did that. And he started attacking this man of God, speaking all sorts of things about the man, saying all sorts of lies and every nasty thing. So this man of God was shocked. He said, this man, I've never had any issues with him. Uh, he knew him. They knew each other very well because the wives of these two men of God are friends. So they called both wives to attention and like, is there anything wrong? So the wife of that man said, you don't mind my husband. I told him not to do that because in the, in the long run, it will affect us. And he said, no, me personally, in my heart, I have nothing against that man. But I was told if you want to get many followers, just start tarnishing a name of a popular preacher. And that's why you don't be fooled by the numbers of the followers you see online. The most important thing is what are the things that are um, operating in that ministry on ground? What are the testimonies out of line? What are the activities going on? You know, uh, Satan is using the same social media against the church. What is supposed to be used to evangelize and capture souls, Satan is using it to destroy the church. And it's because most of the people who have been used to destroy the church and other people are people who are still battling with self. They are still people who are looking for popularity. They are trying to look for um, ways in which they can make their name relevant. But you see, the day you start fighting another person who is doing the same task, that you claim you are doing, you are gradually losing relevance for yourself. Relevance for yourself. It's such a very sad thing, but it is getting so common, so, so, so common. So now when such a person rises up and destroys, they are not fighting, they are fighting the power of the cross. They, are be, they become the enemy of the cross. Uh, because if you preach Christ and you're preaching Christ only, like there was a certain preacher who rose up against another pastor and he said that he was going to start a new series of teaching. And the topic of the series was he mentioned that man of God's name. I, and when he mentioned it, I, I was like, what is, what is going on? How do you start a series on a person? And the series, you know, series has part one. It can be part one A, part one B, part one C, part one D, depending on where your ABC will end. Then you can start series part two. I said, why spend time? You're a fellow mortal man. You're a fellow human being, born of woman, carrying blood and flesh in the body. Why rise up to make another man a topic of discussion? It shows you've lost focus. It shows you've lost your vision. It shows you don't know what to do. It shows your brain is empty. You no longer have what to preach. Because if you spend time preaching another person, like you have exhausted the Bible, then it shows you have lost focus. And such a person's time on earth is just a matter of time. You see, within a short time, the person will be phased off. They become history. And yet all these things can be avoided if people get to understand they are called their purpose and cling focus to it. It is people, I believe, that have not understood their purpose, their focus that have time for other people. But if you really have focus and you're, you're sticking to your business, why would you have business for another person or an agenda that is not part of your business? So those are things that, that always disturb me. And I say, why, why would somebody, you know, rise up and do all that? So the enemy here mentioned in this scripture is not a personal enemy. It's not a political enemy or even the devil. But it's talking about the persecutor of the faith. Those who fight the work of God. Those who fight those who are doing the work of God. Those who rise up to hinder the work of God. Uh, because when you look at scripture, it's all about the gospel. It's all about reaching out the word of Christ to everybody. It's all about that. So the enemy here they're talking about is the enemy of the cross. The enemy of the cross. They are the ones persecuting you for your faith. You gave your life to Christ. You stood and said, Lord, I am for you. I've confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. They begin to rise up against you. They begin to say you're confused. What is wrong with you? You don't get angry with such people. You don't get angry with them because, number one, they don't have understanding why you have gone to the light. 
They don't see it light. They see it as darkness. Now, if you come from strong backgrounds that the religion was instilled from childhood, and they have believed that religion for years, the fathers have, have worshipped in that religion for years, they now hear you've crossed into salvation. Of course, the persecution will be high. The attacks will be high. There are even those that they want to hunt for and kill. So Jesus is saying, don't hate them. Don't hate them. Don't hate them. Don't hate them. Because when you look at the word enemy, the Greek word for that uh, word enemy, it means the enemy of the people of God. That's what it means. So when we take the word enemy back to the origin in the uh, Greek, it means the enemy of the people of God. Those ones who don't like the people of God. Those who are rising up against the people of God. Those that are determined to frustrate the people of God. So it's talking about the enemy of the people of God of God. And we see this written in Psalms 31. Let's go to Psalms 31. Let us go to Psalms 31. Let us open our Bibles to Psalms uh, 31. Uh, Psalms 31, and we are going to read verse 8. Psalms 31 verse 8, it says, And has not thou, as and has not shut me up into the hand of the enemy, thou hast set my feet into a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes is consumed with grief, my soul and my belly. For my life is spent with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of my iniquity, and my bones are consumed. You know there is that terror that comes upon a person. You hear some things and you feel there is no energy in your bones again. You feel you are so weak. Your strength fails you at that time. You begin to cry and weep and yell because of the things that you have had. So that's the kind of enemy that we are talking about. The enemy of the people of God. The enemy of the work of God. Those that fight the work of God. You can imagine now you are preaching the gospel and from nowhere your neighbor knows you preach the gospel. And then they come at your door every morning and they begin to shout. They begin to speak all sorts of things. This person is a fool. This person is not serious. This person is a pretender. This person pretending to preach the gospel. There's nothing in the gospel they are preaching. Da, 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 da. Then you also stand at the door. You are the one who is a stupid one. You're the one who doesn't have sense. You're the one. When the people are out looking, they see the both of you exchanging. <laughs> who, who are they going to see has sense? They will look at everyone exchanging to each other as one who does not have sense. So that, that is the category that you know the scripture is talking about. When you go to Psalms 138 verse 20, let's go to Psalms 139. Psalms 139 verse 20. Psalms 139 verse 20. 139 verse 20. It says, for they speak against the wickedly, and thy enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. And am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. So you see, the enemy here is talking about more of what? Those who love God, those who are the people of God, those who are doing the work of God is the ones they are really targeting. And that's when verse 23, David says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me into the way of everlasting. The way of everlasting is the way of righteousness, getting into the right track, living an upright life. So we must take note of those two scriptures that we've read, you know. It's targeting the enemy of God, those who are doing the work of God. This enemy is specifically a persecutor of your love, your love for Christ, your love for the work of God, your love for the things of God. Uh, there was a time there was a lady who was really doing so much for the work of God. She loved the work so much that even anything that she would see is being spoiled or destroyed in the church should you know feel so much concerned so some one of the ladies said that this one is handling the church things as though it is property of her father yes it is but the father the person was speaking about was the biological father but this one who was taking care of the property of the church was looking at the heavenly father so you look at two different mindsets so the issue became a serious matter so when we were addressing the thing i told the one who was looking referring to the carnal flesh 
I said that you better go back and make peace with God and reverse your statement. Uh, because when a time comes and you have your own setting, or for example, you start your own business or you start anything that is your own, people will come and destroy it. People will come and destroy it. People will come and shatter everything that you have built because of this attitude and the way you spoke. I said these things are registered. They keep registered. They will wait for your tomorrow. I said that is what they call karma. Karma will always give you back the same way you gave it to another. I said now this one is defending the property of the house of God, making sure the thing does not get spoiled because she has owner of her heavenly father. You, you're, look, you're making a comment claiming that she's taking care of it as though it is her earthly father's property. I said, look at your way of thinking. That means you do not fear the things of God. You do not respect the things of God. The writing that came upon the wall in Daniel, in the book of Daniel, when the kings told them to go to the house of God, to the temple, and get the cups of the temple, and use it to serve in the party that he was making a celebration. It was from that move the man made that God removed him. The writing came on the wall, and then eventually the man was removed from his position. So when it comes to the things of the house of God, we need to respect it. Many, many times people don't respect the things of God. They take it for granted. They assume. So... Now, if somebody is very serious, loyal, and diligent in the house of God, you find others making all sorts of comments. See that one, pretending she, uh, she thinks she'll buy her way to heaven. She thinks she'll do this. And why, have to, why do you have to talk that? So you see that is the category of um, the ones that the scripture is referring to. Those who fight the work, they fight the faith, speak all sorts of nonsense. So when you look at the word love, you know there are very many couple of definitions of love in the Greek. We have the filial love, we have the agape love um, that the, the, the scripture commonly talks about. Uh, but this one of the word love, uh, love your enemies that Jesus is talking about is from the Greek word agapao. This word agapao uh, here the Lord is, is talking about to love. It means to love. And that word love, what the Lord meant was not this sentimental or emotional love or this human kind of love that, you know, uh, people have redefined and misunderstood. It's talking about the God kind of love, the God kind of love that loves more than enough, the God kind of love that loves more than enough, that kind of love that... Um, does not make you see a weakness, that does not make you see a fault, that does not make you see a blame, that kind of love that goes more than enough. That's the kind of love we are talking about. So it means to love enough to do good with practical concern of another person's well-being. You're so much concerned about a person, another person's well-being. So that is to love your enemies, those who persecute you, for your faith. It's talking about the faith. So no matter what um, he may have done to you or she may have done to you, the same love uh, the Lord Jesus Christ loved is the same as where we should. Uh, when you look at the John chapter 3 verse 16, John 3 16 that says that, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So this kind of love is this love that doesn't condemn, the love that doesn't judge, doesn't hit back, doesn't revenge. That is what he's trying to tell us, that don't hit back, don't revenge. Don't start running to defend yourself over what they have accused you for or what they are persecuting you for or what they are trying to do upon your life. That said, don't spend time doing that that you just um when they come to you and they need and you have the capacity to help help the same one who said you're pretending to be born again look at you and nothing good shall come out of you they just rise up against you tomorrow you hear they have a problem next door you get up and go and help that's what jesus is trying to say don't allow grudges to be held in your heart don't allow things to to control your life don't allow emotions to drive you uh, because uh, they spoke a bad, bad about you. They attacked you, you know. Always give an open hand and let the Lord be the one to judge. That's why he says when he asks you for what to eat, he's hungry, give him what to eat. If he's thirsty and asks you for what to drink, give him water. So there is trying to say that there comes a time when the same people fighting you, persecuting you, come back to you. You receive them. 
A person can attack you because you gave your life to Christ to say, oh, why are you doing that? Why have you left your old religion? Why are you doing this and that? And then um, they, they, they now send a message that, oh, after some time they are quiet, they are quiet. They now send a message to you that, ah, so and so is not well. You don't go and say, aha, God has started on them. They have not seen anything. They, will, they have not yet seen anything. It's just the beginning of the act. In fact, they are not taking a cup of tea. They have just started with warm-up. Jesus is saying, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. So when they say, oh, the person is not well, you go. You go. There was a time uh, there was some uh, elderly women, elderly women, you know. They came from some other church, but they would just come for special programs. So one of the one of the ladies um, rises up and says she got a dream. And when she got that dream that God showed her, uh, there was a minister in the church. Uh, God told her to tell that minister that she should repent from the wickedness she's doing. And you see, uh, when I started understanding dreams, you cannot twist me with your dreams because what is the source of your dream? Which power is backing up the source of your dream? From which realm is that dream coming from? So this woman spoke all sorts of things about this lady. And, and the, the lady in picture there, you know there are some people, you don't even need <coughs> God to really give you a deep realm, you know, about a deep revelation about them. There are some people you just look and, and the atmosphere around them will tell you what kind of life they live, a private life. You can know, you can tell, you can tell. There's that energy around them that can tell you the kind of live life they live, even when you're not with them. You can tell. So this lady rose up against this lady, started speaking all sorts of false things about this lady. She, 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 she managed to go through for one year successfully. And, and this lady was so depressed, so depressed. So we spoke to her and told her that uh, if what they are saying is not true, you ignore her. She said, how can I ignore her? How can I ignore her? How, how do you want me to carry my face? I say, ignore her. It's a matter of time. So after about one year of that lady's uh, uh, continuous talk, the lady all of a sudden started deteriorating. She started getting headache, migraine headache. Her health in and out is not well. And the lady now disappears. And then, of course, at that time, she was not a member, but these people come for special program. Even in the church where she was, she had scattered about two of her pastors, you know, those ones took it to another level. They, they said her life will never balance. Things will not, you know, come out right with her. So after some time, of, of course, before I, I told the lady when she had come for the special programs, and, and I asked her, this thing you're talking about, this lady, are you sure you verified? Yes, I swear. She said, I said, where did you get this information from? She said, I got a dream, and my dreams are just don't come like that. My dreams, all my dreams are right. I said that you're mistaken. You've been misled. I see you say all your dreams are, are right. The way I see her, not even one scripture could she quote. So by which fruit or by which spirit was, being ba was the dreams being backed up? And I told her, even though it is a dream, it shows you're childish. God, if God showed you, he's showing you for you to pray and intercede for the person. You, you're rising up, uh, publishing, going announcing. As I told her, when your cup of iniquity is full, are you going to handle what will come up of you? Because the way you've tarnished this lady's name is so terrible. The woman was not remorse at all. She was not bothered. She said, me, I have been in salvation for 28 years at that time. She had been in salvation for 28 years. And I don't know what has your number of years got to do with what we are talking about. In, you can be 28, 30, 40 years, but you behave like a child. Because if you are not grounded in the word and you do not allow the word to be grounded in you, there is no way you're going to have a change. And this is now the battle of the body of Christ. Many give their lives to Christ, but they don't go through foundational teachings that are supposed to help them understand uh, the principles of how a Christian life should be. So the lady jammed. Okay, we left her. We let her be. I told this other lady. The other lady got so sad. Wanted even to, you know, change location. I said, how can you change her? The other one is not even a member in the church. It just comes for special programs. Why are you moved and shaken, you know? But after one year, the lady started his health started deteriorating in and out, in and out, in and out. She fell sick, very sick, terribly sick. She was admitted in the hospital. Now, her close friends, who she was gossiping with, they knew who she loved, who she did not love. She knew they knew who she hated. So her two pastors, where she was um, 
categorized as a member of that church. She was not in talking terms with them because she had already shattered them, speaking negative about them. They didn't even want to hear or see her. So when the lady fell sick, she was admitted in the hospital, she went into a state of being unconscious. So they called the pastors and said that, ah, one of your members, what? When they mentioned the lady's name, one of the pastors said she has not seen anything. She has just The music has just begun. So the people got confused. They were like, okay, she used to go to MFM for special program. Let's alert the pastor. So when they called us, we asked them, who is that you're talking about? Because we had not seen her in about six months. We said, ah, but she's not our member. Uh, have you informed her pastor and her church? They say, ah, pastor, that is a long story. You see, when a person is a trouble cause, nobody even wants to be around them. So they now narrate, this is the situation, what? So I tell the other lady that this is now an opportunity for you to go and check on that lady, and um, maybe she will repent and make reconciliation. She said, I cannot face that lady. I can't. I cannot. I even am, she said, now I'm, I'm more consoled that uh, God has answered me because I, I kept crying every day that God, this woman, you're going to allow her to go scot-free like that. <laughs> but you see, uh, the, the, the daughter, you know, was crying, crying, pleading, crying, pleading. So the one who she attacked refused to go and see her. So we, 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 sat, we sat on the border border, went, went to Mulago to, to, to see the lady. Even, uh, even myself, she did not speak nice words about me, but me, I'm a person, I'm not bothered. You can talk what you want to talk. You don't move me. Because first of all, I know, I know why I'm on earth, and I know what I'm meant to do. And when I look at what I'm supposed to do, it's still a lot. So I'm not going to rack my little brain and brain cells to go and allow blockage uh, from the stress hormones and bring issues for my health. No way. You talk, that is you. You talk, that is your problem. When your sense comes back and you want to talk to me, if, if I have time, I'll talk to you. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for such things, you know. So when I went to see the woman, she was in a very pathetic state. When we started praying, the Holy Spirit said, no, you just don't rush to pray like that. Then a lot of other revelations came up. So I was asking the close friends, did this woman attack? So I said, I say her work was just to go to churches and attack, attack, attack. There are people who have um, a calm spirit. There are those who have the Elisha kind of spirit that is aggressive. They don't waste time instantly. They just deal with you. So you just have to be careful who you try, who you trade upon, who you don't. And all these men or women of God, when they rise up and issue a mandate, the heaven backs them up. Heaven backs them up because they are levels of grace. They are those that whatever they speak, it stands. But the question is, who gets the damage at the end of the day? So that's why Jesus is teaching us, let go. Learn how to let go. Learn how to let go. Don't hold it in your heart. Don't make an issue out of it. Learn to let go. Learn to ignore. What is he trying to say? Grow up. Those are signs of maturity. Those are signs of maturity. This woman was in a very pathetic state. Very pathetic so I now told the people, let us go before God and repent. Let us ask God for mercy. Even when we were doing repentance, still you would feel like a brass blockage. You, you feel like, you know there are times you pray and you know your prayer has not even reached above your head. You know it has not gone even on top of your head. It is still within your mouth. It has not reached. That is how we would feel. Repent, and then we said, what do we do? As the Holy Spirit, what do we do? Even in repentance, we are struggling, struggling, struggling. But you see, the Holy Spirit said, just keep saying mercy. Just keep calling mercy. Just keep calling mercy. And we kept calling mercy, 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 mercy until the rains broke. That's when we felt that, yes, there's a shift. There's a change. But this lady was unconscious. So after doing the repentance on her behalf, we turned now told the daughter, the only prayer you should be praying, you ask God, who, whoever... She offended whatever work she fought. Oh, God, let your mercy come. So imagine at that time, we did not go and we told the caller. That woman laid her bed. Let her lie in it. It is time for her to enjoy her pain that she caused others. But you see, at that point, all of us who were there were about seven. We learned a lesson. We learned a lesson. People left that word with a changed mindset. 
different change mindset. One of them said never in their life will they ever talk about anyone doing the work of God or ever fight. I said that, you see, this work of God, people think they are fighting the preacher, they think they are fighting the church. If Christ is the one that has been at the background, you see, different churches have different messages for a different kind of congregation. There are certain particular kind of congregation that will be comfortable in a certain setting. Another kind will be comfortable in a certain setting. That's why we have all these different churches. Of course, there are those that have come up in terms of selfish gain uh, for business because maybe they failed to get a job or things were not working out. And they said, okay, let us use this avenue to get money. When the foundation is laid on the cornerstone, when the cornerstone is the one that has laid the foundation, Beloved, there are particular kind of people that will wait for a gift to us, a particular kind of people. So you don't have any right to go and start attacking another congregation, another pastor. You have no right to do that. Leave that for Christ because he says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So those who have fought the church thinking they're fighting the pastor, you, you waste your time, you waste your time, you waste your time. When that cup of iniquity gets full, the problem comes. But now we that Jesus is telling those who have persecuted you, those who have accused you, those who have said all sorts of things against you, those who have attacked you one way or the other, do that, this, that, 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 that. He says, don't do what they are doing to you. Don't hit back. Love them as in go extra mile to do that thing that you wouldn't um, have done when you're in pain. Just go extra mile and do it. That's why he said that when they are hungry, give them food. Yes, they hurt you. You went into a state of depression. Okay, they have come to you, oh, you see, now I have no food. They, will, they might not even apologize to say, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I did this to you, please forgive me. They might not. They can be very arrogant, very, very arrogant. So when they come and look at okay, please give me some salt. He said, okay, have the salt. Jesus is saying the more you do that good compared to what they have said or done for you, you are piling hot coils of fire on their head. So now, instead of us leaving in a limbo and we don't know what to do the lord jesus christ gave us the three practical guidelines he gave us the three practical guidelines in that scripture we read in the matthew 5 43 three practical guidelines he said number one bless them so the word blessing here is like speak well of your enemy or speak no evil about them for example they came and tell you uh the other pastor said you're you're like this you're terrible now like like uh, for example like me they've spoken all sorts of things but many times, those people who spoke things, they run helter skater and they end up coming back. When they come back, I never chase them. I receive them. Receive them <coughs> and trying to make them understand <coughs> and want to know, why did you do this? What was your point? Are you willing to change? Are you genuinely coming back? Are you Are you out to make things work out right? <coughs> that is what I normally ask them. So when I see they are serious, when I see they are serious, I said, okay. How do you want us to help you? If you know they come and say, so and so said you're bad like this. <coughs> I will not say that hey, even them they're like this, like this. Don't answer back. That is what the scripture is talking about. <coughs> so let us look at the three practical guidelines. Number one, bless them. Speak well of them. They'll speak bad about you. You speak well of them. When they say, ah... <coughs> That one is terrible. You know, there was a time they said uh, we sacrificed a cow on the altar. I said sacrifice the full cow on the altar. Yet when we were building that altar, we involved the church. We told the members, come and be part of this construction. So we all came, got soil. Those who carried soil would carry to backfill the, the, the place when the engineer built, constructed, now the place was like a ditch. He now said, we need to back fill. So I like to make the church be part of this construction of the house of God. 
We called them in. So they came. And people came so joyfully. Nobody asked for money. No. We came, we poured sand. Remember, we would carry bensins and buckets of the sand. We poured, we poured until we filled it up in joy and happiness. So now if the man says, ah, Benita got a cow in the night, sacrificed, then buried it, that is a blunt lie. Because the members who had it were the ones even who rose to defend. They say, ah, where did the cow pass? We are the ones who backfilled that place. We are the ones who backfilled that place. So when I heard, I did not say, say that you go and tell that man that is the one who is crazy, is the one who is mad. They come and tell you, you see that man and woman of God is like this. You say that, yes, I know even they said this and that and that. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Don't add anything. If they say, oh, the man of God said this and that and that, that one said this about you, keep quiet. Don't answer back. Another person comes and tells you, hey, there's this man of God who does like this. I say, keep quiet. Don't answer back. That is what Jesus is saying. Bless them. If they say that, that say, hey, the Lord will help them. The Lord will touch them. Ah, this one is that, like that. Pray for them. The Lord touch them. That's the attitude Jesus wants us. Somebody comes and says, hey, you see, that man of God is not anointed. You also put your mouth. Hey, even the other time, I felt like the anointing was like porridge. It was cold. You were putting issues for yourself. It's a matter of time. All those who, whose work is to look at the weakness of another person and you bring it out. You've not taken time to pray. You've not put it to the table of God and say, God, this is my pastor or this is the minister. Lord, let your mercy come and intervene. This is the weakness I have seen in so-and-so's life. Father, help them. Hold them. Take it away. You, your own, is criticize, gossip, make comment. The question is, you who is speaking, how perfect are you? You who is speaking, what have you done about what you have seen? This is what Jesus is saying. Bless them. Don't speak anything. The, one of the sons of um, E. Kenneth Hagin, um, the, he was talking about the let fire his father. He said, each time anyone went to the father to speak badly or demean any man of God, any woman of God, uh, such words never came out of his mouth. The father just kept saying, bless them, speak well about them. He said, ah, they have said, Kenneth, you're using um, hugging, you're using wrong power. He would ignore. He never put it in his head. That's what we call focus, knowing who you are. Not, they not shake you. They, they, everyone has their opinion. They can talk what they want to talk. It's a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. God himself knows how to handle that work. But for you as you, don't go about speaking negative, demeaning people. Don't. You might think you're up there because of the little, tiny things that God, you know, is using you for. It does not mean you demean others. No. Bless them. Don't speak negative. Yeah, this man of God, this is a keep quiet. Keep quiet. The next thing Jesus is telling us, because all these things we are going to talk about, the three practical guidelines, it has to do with the heart. What you allow to accommodate in your heart, what you allow to sit in that heart, what you want to rule, what you allow to rule over that heart is what will determine. So your heart may be hurting, but go beyond, go beyond self. Your heart may be hurting, but go beyond self. So the Lord is, is, is helping us to deal with self here. And he's helping, telling us that that fallen nature that wants to always revenge, wants to counter, he said, fight it, fight it, fight it. Remember the scripture we read, the Matthew 5, 43 to, you know, 47 to 49. It says that um, God gives rain to the, un to the just and the unjust. The sun shines upon the good and the evil ones. So he's trying to say that... Um, we are among them, but we should not act like them. If they rise up to attack us one or the other because of our faith, because of our love for Christ, our love for the things of God, don't hit back. He says, don't hit back. Be different. The next practical guide that our Lord Jesus Christ gave in that scripture was do good to them. Do good to them. Do good to them. Uh, uh, for example, they persecute you. They, they have spoken terrible things about you. They have put all allegations against you, all sorts of negativity, it's so terrible, so terrible about you, they now come back to you 
They need food to eat. You have the money. Pull from your wallet and give them. That's what the Bible is saying. Just do it. You pile what? Whole coats of fire on their head. They'll say, aha. This hunger you're facing is just the beginning. You eat your hair. The time will come, you eat your nose. Ah, he says, don't do that. He said, do good to them. So doing good to them is they have a need. If you have the capacity to meet that need, do it. That's what he's trying to say. They attacked you, they abused you, they accused you. Do good to them. That's what he's saying. The third thing, he says, pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. When you pray, whatever negativity is in your heart will all melt. When you start praying, it will start melting away. This is how we can love our enemies. Remember the enemies they are talking about, the enemies of the gospel, those who persecute you in the church, out of the church, those that are waging war against you, those that are speaking all sorts of things against you, those that are fighting the work that you are doing for God. Uh, why did Jesus cancel us to do this? He wants us, his remnant, who are citizens of heaven, to exhibit the character of God. God is long-suffering. He's patient. He's kind. Look at all the things, terrible things that we do that are not pleasing in the sight of God, and yet he doesn't release the judgment immediately. He gives room for repentance. He gives room for us to come back and turn back to him. So Jesus is saying, if you you say that is your heavenly father, you must exhibit the character of the father that you call God. So that's the whole point. As citizens of heaven, that is our mindset. Goodness, mercy, patience, long-suffering. So the character we see that is the character nature of God, we see that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. Matthew 5, 45, where it says that, you may be sons of your father in heaven, that you may be sons of your father in heaven, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain to the just and on the unjust. So the, 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 the Luke 635 says, but love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. So the enemy comes, the one who has been attacking you, speaking all sorts of nasty things about you, terrible things about you. They come and say, I need... Uh, some money, please help me, I have this crisis, I have this problem, please help me. They even have forgotten that they were the ones fighting you. Jesus is saying, if you have, lend them, do good and lend. That's what the Luke 6, 35 says, hoping for nothing in return. So that's the time when you know your capacity to give is 20,000, for example, and um, in case the person doesn't pay, it's okay. So Jesus is saying that give in return knowing that you will not get the reward back. And he says your reward will be great and you'll be sons of the most high. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Are you seeing? He's kind to the unthankful and evil. Meaning those who are unthankful and evil, when they turn their hearts back to him, God is in position to forgive them. And that's what he wants. He wants us to draw back to him. He wants us to come back close to him. So looking at this character of God, he is kind to the unthankful and the evil people. So evil people can be non-Christians, non-believers, um, <coughs> unthankful Christians, even those who, they are Christians who are very un unthankful, they are having gratitude. We have to be kind to all those that we can. You know, all this is giving us very good records and marks. So when you give freely, just do it and don't expect anything in return. Don't expect anything in return. When the same person forgets and uh, fights you, most of the people that fight us are the people we stood with when they had nobody to stand with them. They are the people that we held together, walked together and worked together with when nobody wanted to see them, when everything had turned against them. You stand with them in prayer, stand with them in counseling, do whatever you have to do. When they come up and they see things are better for them, they are the ones who rise up to fight you. I, it's what I've studied. I've seen it. I have checked and done, you know, some mappings. I've realized that, wow, the ones you spend a lot of time upon, sacrifice upon, do what you can do for them, their life to come up. And you, your, your joy is to see them have a testimony. They are the ones who will turn back and fight you, speak like you, you are of no use. 
they can even say that there's nothing you did. It is God. It is God. And meanwhile, God used you as the channel. So that, that is the category we are talking about, you know. All those kinds of things that fight in the church, attack in the church, persecute you. You are in the church, you should be in position to know all that, all the gossip and rumor monger. Make sure you're not the carrier. Make sure you're not the one who goes to gossip, to scatter, to destroy. Don't. The future will not be kind for you at all. At all, at all. So those who take maybe defaulting or maybe they have an intent in their heart to cheat, you may think you suffered uh, long, but God, God will bless you and multiply you back what he promised to others. He gives it back. So the, and, I've, and, I've, and, I've, and I've mastered and I've seen this <coughs> example in scripture. I've seen it. I've practically done it and I have seen it. I've seen God give back in good measure. So finally, the golden rule. We see in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, that one we call the golden rule. It says, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Whatever you want men to do to you, do unto them. It's the law and the prophets. So this is, is, is called by most Bible scholars the golden, the golden rule or the royal law written in James 2.8, which says that thou shalt love thy neighbors as thyself. What you want to, to see in you, do it for others. What you, want them to do, what you want them to do for you, do the same for others. That's just a principle. So all this, n um, this thing will help us to come out of self and come out from being self-centered, selfishness. This is what Jesus is now looking at. Um, it fulfills the law and the prophets. So what is the message of the law and the prophets? We see this in Matthew 22. Verse 34, 37 to 40. Matthew 22, from verse 37 to 40. Let us go and read there. It says that Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as thyself. One of these two commandments hung all the law and of the prophets, they hang on the law and of the prophets. So this law and the prophets include the book of, of Exodus up to the book of Malachi. Uh, uh, when you read the book of Malachi up from that time, there are lots of things that were mentioned there. And all the law and the prophets is also till up to John the Baptist. It goes up to there. So all the teachings, all the statutes, all the judgments, uh, they summarize into two sentences. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And then you love your neighbor as you love yourself. So the Old Testament law summarized it into two commandments. It was summarized into two commandments. You know it started with the 613, then compressed to 10 commandments, then now brought down to two. So the spirit and the essence of the golden rule is put others first more than you. Let others be the ones to be considered first than you later. Uh, this is um, something that our Lord Jesus Christ wants to help us to deny self and crucify our pride. Crucify our pride put down the self-centeredness, uh, command all these things that everything about me, 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 me. He wants us to put down self. That's why he's teaching us this thing. The whole point message is self is the biggest problem that causes all this. So you begin to have the importance of others. You think about others, which is most preferably more in the heaven. That's why Jesus had to come and he died for us. So it should, should be about others, first priority others. So remember one thing, there's always um, someone who knows better than you. We should also have that at the back of our mind. There's always somebody who knows better than us. So we should not be consulted that you are the only one uh, that knows everything, that you can do everything. Put it at the back of the mind that there are those who are better than you and come to terms with that and accept it. There is someone who is more spiritual than you, uh, godlier than you, saintlier than you. There's always somebody who is far ahead of you. So appreciate the ones that are around you. So this is the medicine of pride. This is the medicine of pride. Always prefer others to you. Deny self, crucify pride. The golden rule here is how you want others to treat you and others, um, how you want others to treat you. This is the entire sermon of the mount that reflects the new covenant of the law. So the new covenant of the law, you see, we see it in John 13, uh, John 13 
and we read verse 34 and 35. It says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So you can imagine you hit back, I hit back, hit back. People are looking. Then tomorrow you wake up and say, Jesus loves you. Give your life to Christ. Will that person confess Christ? They will remember what you did, what you spoke, what you exchanged. And that's why it's very unfortunate. Uh, some man of God made a research and he said many who win souls to Christ and preach the gospel, many times the w their end is normally terrible. Their end is normally terrible. And that's not how it's supposed to be because they have not dealt with self. So, beloved, bringing this message to an end, we need to go back and put our hearts to order. We need to check um, the cardinal rule or the foundation of heaven. Even God himself, the essence of God, his major attribute is what? Love. Love. Uh, when you read that First John 4, uh, 8, uh, or you read the verse 16, he says, for God is love. So, for God is love. So, when the Lord is asking us to love, it is his character that he wants us to display, to, uh, to, to adopt to. So, in, 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 in closure of this, uh, the golden rule is, what is hateful to you? Do not allow your fellow men to have it. What is not good for you? Don't allow another one to have it. What you cannot eat? Don't allow another to do it. What you cannot drink? Don't allow another to drink. That's where you find many Christians setting up a bar. You are not drinking the alcohol. Why are you allowing another one to drink? You don't love them. This is what he's saying. Those things that you cannot do for yourself or for your children, don't do it for others. Don't do it for others. You feel the pain that if you do it, it will pain you on your children. So why are you doing it for the others? So this is what he wants us to know. And that's why in Second Enoch 61 verse 1 to 2, Enoch brings out the same message. He says, my children, keep your hearts from every unrighteous deed which the Lord hates. He hates it. The Didache is that book of the apostles of the first century. There's that book called the Didache, uh, the book that the apostles wrote, what the apostles taught. The apostles also brought it out and said, love God who made you. Love God who made you. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do not do anything to another person that you do not want to happen to you. This is what I was saying. The Didache says that, Didache 1 verse 2. It says that. So, beloved, the sermon on the mount, the purpose of this sermon of the mount, the angle of this sermon of the mount is that we may be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. This is the end goal for us to be perfect. That is the purpose. So to bring us to that place of perfection. So you're there. You've never confessed Christ as Lord and Savior. I want you to repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died for me. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord over my life. Thank you, Lord, for loving and accepting me. Father, I present those children unto you, King of glory. They have boldly confessed you as Lord and Savior. Intervene over their mat, over their situation. Anything contrary that wants to rise up against them, we intercept it in the name of Jesus. Continue to release your spirit of love. Let it take rule charge over them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So, beloved, get in touch with us. Our contacts are online. It will help us. It will help you to get in touch with us. We have some uh, classes you need to attend. It will help you strengthen you, make you firm, and make you grow to understand more of what the scripture says and what plans the Lord has for you through his word. And this one will help you to be firm and to grow. For us who are already in salvation, I want us to go back and search. Give time. Search yourself. Search your attitude. Search your mindset. Have you ever at one point destroyed a person, scattered a person, led an accusation about the person? Go before the Father and say, Lord, that was the time of stupidity, the time of foolishness, the time of ignorance. But now I've come to realize what I did was wrong. I hurt the person's feelings. I took advantage of the person's kindness. I was so selfish, so bad. Help me. And you now notice the realms will shift. Then when you get time, go and meet the person physically. If you can reach them and, 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 and apologize and say, you see, I, I could have hurt you, I could have done this. I want you to forgive me. That one will open the rims for you and your breakthroughs will surely 
come to you. Many breakthroughs are not coming to people because of their careless talk. Many God gave them grace and put them up where they are. When they got up there, they felt they have arrived. They felt they are anointed. They are more spiritual than others. So they've started pointing fingers and now things have started scattering and going bad. So go back to God and make peace with him. He's a faithful, kind, and merciful God. And that's what he wants us to display, his character. The Lord keep us all. The Lord bless us. Let him protect and keep watch over us. Uh, let him continue to hold us and give us the grace to continue to run this race that we will not fail, we will not falter, we will not fall, we will not faint. In Jesus' name, God bless us all.